Hey y'all, new day, new verses. As we continue on in Isaiah, today we're going to be picking up with chapter 40, verses 1 and 2. And Father God, just thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity. Lord God, just lead us, refine us, shape us, renew us. Just do it again, Lord God. Shape a Genesis week from the chaos in our life. Quiet the storm that the house may stand firm on your rock. The whole structure shaped at cornerstone. Perfect as you square us to your form. Lord, teach us how to live. Teach us what it means. Show us. Do it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 40, verses 1 and 2. Comfort. Comfort my people, says God. It says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned. Yes, Yahweh has punished her twice over for all her sins. And I wanted to pause there for a couple of reasons. One, the continuing on verses are going to get to some amazing, beautiful places. Ones that, if you're more versed in the New Testament than the Tanakh, congratulations, we're getting into the thicket of places you know. If you're more versed in the Tanakh than the New Testament, we're going to get into places that beautifully point to who Jesus is the suffering servant, the need, the one like Moses, but even greater who comes to set things right, the sacrificial limb who dies in our place that we might be made whole. That is who's coming. That is who Jesus is, and that's who's coming from Isaiah's perspective. And I find it really interesting and enjoyable that we were reading Chronicles and Kings together in parallel with this, right? And we end here at this section, and we go on. It's interesting to me that as far as Chronicles and Kings are concerned, or rather for Isaiah, from Isaiah's perspective and his lifetime, especially with that section in Kings and Chronicles, we kind of hit a, there's the end of the story. Because, yeah, the story of Chronicles does continue on all the way to uh, Jehoiachin, which is Hezekiah's, let's see, um, let me just do this the fast way. See, Hezekiah's son is Manasseh, grandson is Amon, Josiah is his grandson, who is raised up by Hilkiah. Then after Josiah, you have Jehoahaz, who ends up being taken. So this is great-grandson. Second great-grandson, because it's another Jehoash's son. So Hezekiah's great-grandson, he's messed with by Pharaoh Necho. Then his son comes up, so you're looking at great Great grandson, and that's right in into it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Nico has told him game show his son during his reign. The king did not venture out of his country after that. The king of Babylon. The Hoyashin. And the sad part is, right after Zedek, Kaya rules in Judah, and then all that wonderful thing, temples destroyed. That's it. After Hezekiah's story, Book of Kings, or rather Scroll of Kings, you have three chapters, all of that, four generations to exile. So as far as Isaiah is concerned, he's hit the back of the book. He's hit Chronicles. Because remember, the Tanakh, Chronicles is in the back. In in Chronicles, yeah, we basically there. So you read this section, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Digging the poetry, digging the beauty, digging into what that means, who He is that we can have comfort. Speak tenderly, sweetly, gently to this city that is supposed to know peace and yet has known very little but war since David took it back when it was called Salem. And even before that, when it was run by the Jebus- or Je- when it was done by the Jebusites. Because he's the one, they're the ones David took it from. It's right there in the text too. <laughs> this city, now that it's been relamed, from a city called peace to a city that will know peace. To tell her tenderly that her sad days are gone. Well, clearly, if we take it in a literal meaning of it, wait, her sad days are gone? But she's about to go into exile. 
and you've punished her twice over for her sins. But where? These words dig into after the exile. These words speak to after that time in Babylon. After everything is carted away, after everything is stripped, and they have been reduced again, God will still make a way. And he did. Ezra, Nehemiah, the Second Temple, Second Temple period literature, the fact that Tanakh is a Second Temple piece of work, finally sewn together in those years. The pieces of the quilt stitched together so that we can have them in our hands now and see the whole thing. The beauty of it. Because these words of promise aren't just written to Jerusalem and Israel in their day. They're written to them, yes. They're written for us as well because we wait for this. We need to know peace. We wait for the new Jerusalem. We wait for new creation living. So when we read these words, comfort, comfort my people. Yes, these words are hundreds, border, more than thousands of years old. Thousands. How many generations of people, brothers and sisters who heard these words, took a breath and remembered that we have a comforter. Reminded not to seek the comfort, but to seek the comforter. Not to seek the healing, but to seek the healer. Not rituals and totems and magic, rather open relationship with the one who makes a way. It's the invitation to do so, the entire want, all the way back on Genesis. Man of the mud, I'm putting you in a garden to be able to come play. Let's play. And for oh so many reasons, the core of them being sin, we end up here. We end up in a story or in just a couple generations, an entire kingdom is going to be sold off into slavery. We reach this point in the story where this once great powerful empire that's temple, Solomon's temple, is still standing at this point. Beauty and wonder and incredible place that's supposed to be like Eden. And nope. Turned into just another Babylon. Exile. Turned into just another Babylon. And not a single stone was left on top of another. And God has not let them go. The chosen ones, the chosen people, Israel still stands here today. Communities all over the world. Beyond number, then hear these words and seek the face of God. Who do as it says in Joshua and Psalms to meditate on these words day and night and not let them leave our lips. So that we can have comfort. Because we know who our King is. We can rejoice because our God pardons our sins. When we seek them, he carries them and done away with, does away with them as far as the east is from the west. And when we turn away from him, we're only adding to the pile. The Lord pardons. Yes, absolutely, the Lord has punished her twice over for her sins. And still she stands chosen and beloved people, his own, descendants of his good friend Abraham, were his. We can stand arm in arm with those who hear these words and want to live it out. It's not just the comfort of the Lord. We take the whole of the thing into itself. And Jesus tells us what the whole of the law and the prophets write on. In Deuteronomy 6, 5, to seek the Shema. And to love others as you are loved. To love others as we are loved by God who would die in our place. 
So we seek the comfort of the one who makes a way. And we share the comfort we have with others. Other-centered, other-focused love. Radically counterintuitive, I know. With the world we live in now, I'm okay with counterintuitive. Are you? Because the intuitive thing to this world is to pull a Hezekiah at the end of his life. Don't believe me? Check social media. I'll wait. You're back? Okay, cool. So, if that's the way that the world does it. Instagram living. Instagram life. Me and mine. Instant now. Then I'm okay with the counter-culture God-kingdom way of doing it. Of resting and comfort even when I am in a place of no comfort whatsoever. This is where words get interesting. <laughs> See, if we're spending our time, and this is just my own experience, okay? There is a time in my life where there was no comfort whatsoever. I'd have everything I wanted fiscally and physically and all that other stuff. I didn't have anything I really needed. I didn't have the, my heart filled, my soul filled. It was just emptiness. Yeah, it was using things and objects and pleasure to paste over what I actually needed at the core. Something real. And so I stopped seeking my comfort. And I started seeking the comforter of my soul. I stopped seeking the healing. And I truly do believe that God will heal my back and my neck, my eyes, the hips, the back. It's a whole list. I don't care, honestly. God will take care of it. Whether it be in the fact that he is God able to do new creation healing or the fact that I will be a physically new creation when he comes. Either way, I win or I win. The double vision testimony that God can see, the inability to stand testimony. I mean, this was able to be set up because God gave me the pain relief to do it. Goodness knows the medical industry is not actually fixing the problem and that has nothing to do with the doctors. That has everything to do with the systems. Because profit has become more important than people. So when you hear these words, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Rest in Him. Know that even though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we need fear no evil, nor should we, because He is with us. That His rod and His staff, that they comfort us. Then we are led, and when we listen to his voice, it shall not be astray. He is the God who makes man's eyes that they should see, makes man's mouth that they should talk, makes man's heart that they should live, and refines it, refines us. So we are living creatures and not just the stone-dead idols that this world worships in pick a form. Whatever American God may be worshipped now. And yeah, it's a solid book from Gaiman if you ever want to read it. Gaiman? Whatever. Gaiman, I think it is. It's a solid work. If you're good to read it. Though if you're here, probably are able to. <laughs> Let's be honest. Give it a look. So we live in a world where every nation has chosen its own gods. We are united. The Lord, our banner, Nisi. Because of Him. He is the one who unites us. He is the one who brings people from every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every color, and brings them together to sing a hallelujah chorus. So that when a song like the blessing is sung, it could be heard all over the world, people praising and singing the same promised words that Aaron was supposed to speak. May the favor of the Lord be upon you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace. Same words echoed all the way through. Because it's not the dopamine we live on. It's the Christ we are devoted to. The anointed one. Who makes 
many anointed ones, the righteous one who makes many righteous. These are just quotes from Isaiah as we are going to come to follow. This is where we get into the beauty, folks. These coming weeks are we're going to get into the poetry that sings to Jesus and speaks songs to his name. Yeah, Shua. Yahweh saves and makes a way. Though his name literally just Yahweh saves. We know him to be waymaker. We know him to be miracle worker. We know him to be king. When we seek him, when we remind our problems how big our God is, instead of complaining to the omnipresent, all-powerful, master and creator of all of reality, how big our problems are. A temporary thing complaining about temporary things. Instead of being refined that we might live with life and life eternal. Not a place of mira and bitter complaining, but a place of comfort. Because we trust who our God is. So that when He says comfort, comfort my people, they're not raw, raw words that barely make it out of the parking lot. They're a reminder of why we do and who He is. Of God. Compassionate, tender in mercy, slow to anger, rich in unfailing love and kindness. Merciful is our Lord. The seasons we go through and the trials we face, they're rough. They're rough. Peter was a fisherman. He's been on the water before. Winds and waves like that that had him freaking out, they're tough. Don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. They're tough. That you're here shows you he'll give you the strength to make it. Because he has something even greater planned. Take comfort in who he is. And watch them work. Use the idiom, let him cook. He'll take care of it. We take our hands off the wheel and let him lead the way. Though the path may not be where we think we are meant to go, and it may lead through forests and valleys and over mountains and through deserts, we will get to the promised land. New salvation, new creation living. New creation living is the idea. It's his salvation. It's he who saves. Let him cry out. Take his hand. And he will take yours. Ask. Receive. I'll see you then.